the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, good evening. Is there anyone here for public input? Anyone for public input? All right, hearing none, review and approve council agenda. I'll approve it as is. I'll second. Further discussion? <clears throat> Favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed unanimously. Consent agenda items. Item A, approve 2023 write-offs. Item B, approve 2024 landscape coordinator agreement. Item C, approve design service agreement for SEH 2024 and 2025 CIPs. Item D, approve grant award for PFA's design, PFA's design. And item E, approve SEH 2024 rates. Move to approve. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passed unanimously. Regular agenda item, public hearing for a proposed budget. The Way Park City Council will hold a public hearing on its budget and on the amount of property taxes it is proposing to collect to pay for the cost of services the city will pro provide in 2024. The proposed 2024 budget is $12,570,582. The proposed budget represents a 9.9 .9 increase from 2023 to 2024. The proposed 2024 tax levy is $10,000,000. 866,317. The proposed tax levy represents a 5.3 increase and a proposed tax rate increase of 2.5 percent from 2023 to 2024. Public hearing is now open at 632. Is there anyone here for that public hearing? Is there anyone here for the public hearing? I'll move to close the public hearing one at 6.33. Second. Further discussion? All right, all in, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, public hearing is closed at 6.33. There is no further action that's needed on this item for tonight. All right, item B, variances, Tom and Susie Ardoff. Uh, Mr. Mayor, council members, or folks in the audience or online or at home, uh, this request has been submitted by Tom and Susie Ardolf as the property owners with support from uh, Dakota Sun Capital LLC and Parcel Real Estate as part of the application. Uh, the request is for several variances from City Ordinance Section 52.56, solar and wind electric generating facilities. Um, primarily requests to reduce setback requirements uh, to facilitate a, a future potential interim use permit request. Uh, that would be handled separately for establishment of a solar electric generating facility. A little bit of history with this. Um, this request was, pre was pre previously reviewed and uh, the associated public hearing was held at the uh, September 12th, 2023 Planning Commission meeting. Uh, public comments were received and after some discussion and consideration, the Planning Commission ultimately decided to table the request for further consideration uh, and opportunity for the applicants to um, take the feedback they received during that meeting and the public hearing um, and look at some revisions. Uh, and minutes from that meeting are enclosed for, for reference with your packets. Um, we did coordinate with the applicants to opted to issue a 120 day extension under state statute to allow additional time for review. Uh, the 120 days is the maximum you can, you can bring out a um, a zoning action application like a, a variance request like this. That timeline is set to expire um, on December 23rd. So um, either action will have to be taken tonight by City Council or uh, at, the, at the very latest, you could potentially look at uh, a table action to the next meeting on the 18th, but uh, no later than that. Otherwise, if, it, if that clock runs out without an action, the variances would be deemed as approved per their original request. Uh, the applicants uh, held off on the October meeting while they are working through revisions and did come back for the uh, November meeting uh, with a, an updated plan that uh, took into account 
most of the comments that were received at the earlier uh, September meeting. Um, a copy of the draft minutes from the November meeting are approved, or excuse me, are attached uh, as well. There was uh, quite a bit of uh, discussion between the Planning Commission applicants and the residents in attendance uh, during the continued public hearing. Uh, ultimately, um, during the meeting itself, uh, the applicants uh, took comments and submitted a updated sketch um, kind of on the fly during the meeting uh, that seemed to satisfy most of the um, most of the concerns that were raised during that meeting. That is attached as part of the resolution. It's the, the finalized uh, sketch. The, the plan has gone through several iterations as feedback has been received, but the, the actual um, <coughs> sketch that you have in front of you would be the, the one that's attached with the resolution. Um, primarily, that, would, that moved the, um, the concept that was brought forward to the November Planning Commission meeting um, off of the, the Ardolph's parcel that's um, most, um, most eastward on their, on their property to the, to the uh, northeast corner there. Uh, it's, not, it's not outlined in red because it wasn't originally part of the request, but um, a little bit lower to the right top. Yep, the, that area right there in the clearing. Uh, the Planning Commission did recommend approval of the variances um, with, with the updated sketch that was uh, reviewed and discussed, and the applicants have since prepared a, a formalized copy that was included as part of the resolution. Uh, I, I feel that the, the revisions were significant compared to the originally proposed option one and option two that came in September, uh, as they, they placed the, uh, the property, or the, the proposed project more centrally located within the Ardolph property. Uh, pushes it much further eastward from County Road 137 visibility, maintains a pretty significant develop, developable area on the western side of the property, which wasn't present with the uh, initial concepts that were reflected in the, uh, the original application packet. This, the one on the screen now that um, is being shown is the, the finalized uh, sketch with the updated um, layouts and the finalized setbacks that were proposed and recommended for approval by the Planning Commission. Uh, should variances be approved, it would be expected that an application for interim use permit would follow and that the, the permit application would be address the specific requirements outlined within the, the ordinance, um, the solar ordinance that was adopted several years ago. Um, if you recall, the solar ordinance was designed to be uh, pretty tight intentionally, uh, but we expected that it we may see a variance request at some point, and uh, we, uh, we knew that we would review any submittals or applications on their merits, and I think that um, given the application and the updated layout and kind of the configuration of the property, I think that they've, uh, at this point, have hit the threshold for uh, practical difficulties with these variance applications. The uh, applicants did a, a very good job of outlaying information to make their case as part of the, the application packet, which was included in its entirety, um, with the exception of uh, personal information redacted where appropriate. Uh, all that information was supplied uh, to the Planning Commission as well. Um, I would um, recommend adoption of the, the resolution that's attached. Uh, uh, approving var the variances uh, as discussed and as proposed with the associated with the, um, the specific project as proposed that layout that's um, attached as an exhibit. Uh, we would still see again the, the actual interim use permit application would follow at some point, not necessarily immediately, but at some point in the future as they, they work through their, their specifics. Uh, but this would bind the, the layout to basically that um, the layout you see or something smaller. Um, less than an existing footprint. So tonight your actions could be any of the following. You could approve um, one or more of the variances as submitted uh, or to a lesser degree, that's always an option. Um, you could deny uh, one or more variances with findings of fact, but uh, I would advise that that probably makes the project untenable at that point. And again, uh, at your discretion, you could potentially table the matter until your next scheduled meeting uh, on the 18th but no later than that. Um, we have to act within the, the 120 days and we're approaching the end of that. So my recommendation uh, would be rec uh, uh, recommend approval or uh, recommend adoption of the attached resolution uh, approving all three variances based on 
the enclosed updated uh, revised project configuration as submitted during the November 14th, 2023 Planning Commission meeting uh, and as noted as Exhibit A within the resolution. Uh, there's a, a lot more detail in the packet I included for reference. This is pretty extensive, but um, I just wanted to kind of um, hit the, the high points for the presentation here. All right, Council. <clears throat> Comments, questions? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd, uh, I'd like to point out that um, as a former member of the Planning Commission and an author of the strategic plan and comprehensive plan that this, um, this is how it's supposed to work. And this discussion that they had and how they banged it all out and they uh, took care of the details, uh, they did exactly the way they're supposed to do it. And, and it's nice to see that it's working the way it's supposed to. So um, I'm for this. <clears throat> okay. Anyone else? Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, with the solar incident that we had with the growth of solar within the city limits, <clears throat> John suggested we come up with the ordinance for where solar can be placed and how it can be placed. And it was supposed to be a pretty strict restriction on where solar can go. Um, this solar farm doesn't fit into our comprehensive plan we've been working on for 18 months. Our strategic plan, same thing. The area out there under our new comprehensive plan is a growth area for R1, R2, those type <clears throat> enhancements to those properties. I understand it's kind of hard to get people to come out and look and to start those building projects but on the second hand, we as a city should be working as long as we've worked on these plans for as long and spent quite a bit of money to help develop those types of properties. And there's ways of doing it that I think we have to meet as a council and planning to start working on some of those types of problems. Um, also, if you look in the comprehensive plan, the land use for that is scheduled for R1 and multiple type building out there. Um, and in the strategic plan, one of the main problems and things that people are looking for in the future is more housing. We have a housing problem in town where there's virtually no lots where people can build. <clears throat> now we're starting to take away property that is very suitable for that type of development um, against our ordinance that was just newly made less than two years ago and was supposed to be strictly enforced. And now we're saying we can do whatever we want whenever. That is not correct. Uh, the League of Minnesota Cities years back at a conference talking about variances and what can happen. Once we approve these variances, you can put solar anywhere you want because you're going to have to give the next person the same variance. So, uh, is it a good project? It, it probably is for the landowner. Yes, I agree. Uh, he's looking to develop a portion part of that property. But what happens to the next property owners that are adjacent? Would you want to build and have backyards in the solar field, uh, even though there is berms up and things like that? Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't think it's the right thing to do, for one. We worked on putting that ordinance together. We all agreed that we have too much solar in this town already. No, we didn't. Yes, we did. 
Maybe some Don't people. include me. Not there. You said we. Well, we are. There's four other people here. Maybe you voted against. I don't know. I can't remember. But, and I believe it was a 5-0 vote on the ordinance enacting the, the solar. Um, we put restrictions even south of this, more or less, when we uh, invoked the, the mining portion of those properties out that way. So, you know, we can say one thing. We've worked on solutions for housing. We're trying to work on solutions for housing. But now we're taking away. We did a comprehensive plan, which has not been approved, but it is here, showing these particular areas where we think the proper development for housing, which people are asking for, uh, maybe apartment building, maybe a, a mixed kind of a community in that type of sense. Um, but now you're telling us to take it away. So that's kind of where I stand. Um, uh, Just for, for reference, council members, um, the earlier iterations of this proposal, um, I didn't feel viable for variance. I don't take these lightly. I don't, in a perfect world, I wouldn't have to deal with them, but uh, we do. When I receive an application, I have to weigh it on its merits. The, the first iteration of this I saw, um, I, I couldn't get behind it. It was plunk in the middle of the property. And I, I felt, I agree, that took too much property offline you know, when we look at revisions, part of my, my comments and concerns were uh, the exact same thing that Mike just mentioned, you know, maintain developable area in line with what the goals are. Um, I think this does that. You know, you start looking at the, the eastern side closest to the, closest to the street. You know, this, this minimizes the, the variance needs to the best it can and, and still fits it in. You know, I, I can't stop people from applying for variances. I, these are not easy projects for me. These aren't, aren't easy projects for the, the planning commission for you to consider. They're not easy projects for, for neighbors to, to come to terms with sometimes. But I think this, the revised layout that they came to, you know, maintains a pretty, pretty solid degree of, of pretty nice area on that western side that um, could be developed if there's interest. And you know, I, I know the property owners have said time and time again that they've been trying to move that property and just no one's bid on it. You know that that's 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 for them to you know to do what they will, but um, this at least maintains you know that kind of diagonal, roughly half of that that remaining property, and it's it is bordered on you know multiple sides by old growth trees. Now now as part of the SNA on the on the southern side, you know that that section on the top, that's a pretty nice section of trees that is those are what are factored in for the variances in my consideration. You know, this is pretty far away from the road. It's not like the, the ones we, we, we already have that are you know, much more tight against the road. Um, part of the consideration I had was this, you know, could we put it in the wetland area? The ordinance itself guides to, to wetlands when they are, when we do consider them. Well, the wetland area across the road is right against 137. It's, it, it's a give and a take. You know, is, is this perfect? No, I, I I don't think so. Nothing is. This is a this is a meet in the middle, and I think it I think it achieved the goal of you know, meeting that practical difficulties. Um, I, I think it it's passable for that. Fine. Any any other applications we'd we receive? You know the the properties to the <laughs> north, the that are the, those large tracks, the several tracks, the Triscos and Labudas. Those are zoned differently, so those aren't really viable for solar. They have to be the, the ag rural residential. This is this is the borderline. It, this is only you know it's, it's here south that's that ag rural residential. I can't say we wouldn't get any other applications ever. I, I don't know. I'm I'm honest with them. I try to dissuade them to be perfectly honest because I it's an uphill battle, um, and it's it's a lot of my time invested that I, I don't always feel is, is appropriate. But you know, they. They approached with a concept, and I gave them the honest feedback and, and what I wanted to see to, that I could even consider getting behind it, and that 
that first shot didn't hit it. You know, but there was there was back and forth, and Sean mentioned you know it, there was a lot of discussion with the Planning Commission and the City Council. It took a took several versions to get there, where I think people were you know maybe not thrilled with it, but they say, yeah, I, I, I can live with that, and that's kind of what I'm what I was going for here. So that's I just wanted to, to bring that that you know I it's very 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 rare I ever make a recommendation of of denial. I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to. It's, it's not something I take lightly, but that's when I, I mentioned to everyone in this room when I did that for the Planning Commission that that was my rationale that, and I was up front as I had earlier discussions with them that there were some concepts I had in mind that I thought could, could reach that. <coughs> this, this was what I had in mind. This is more in, in line with that. Yeah, and I totally agree with you, John. You know, I, I went back and watched <coughs> the planning committee meetings, and uh, there's been a lot of due diligence done on this to make this work for everybody. So I'm totally for it. And, and it's not, uh, this, this just makes the project viable. You know, there's still gonna be issues that need to be hammered out through the interim use permit process if and when they get that far. I don't know where they're at, or I assume they're probably not too far into that because they, they would need this to be approved by the city council before they would get to that next stage. but. There will there'll be a lot more um, finessing as this goes through. Just this, this is just the first, first thing that even make it possible. Without these variances, it's, that's the end of it. It's, there's no more. Mike brought up a few points, <coughs> excuse me, um, about people wanting to build homes. We have opportunities for people to build homes, but yeah. yet nothing happens. <coughs> and at the rate we build homes, if we build 3.5 homes a year, we have more land to fill in than it's ever going to take for a 25-year photovoltaic farm to um, need to be moved. So I consider this a great interim use before we'd ever need that property to build homes. That's how long it's going to take. Because we're kind of putting the cart before the horse when you talk about, he mentioned comprehensive plan. The areas, the three areas they identified in there to be first a five to seven year development, I argue with. I think that's, that number should be 15. Them three prime areas uh, first considered for development. So this is, this photovoltaic farm will be wore out by the time you need to build homes there. And the great part about a photovoltaic farm is there's no footings. It's just pipes pounded into the earth. You pull them out like carrots and the property's ready to build homes. Anything else? I would agree with Mike that the fact that we, we spent a lot of time on, on, on solar ordinance and now we want a variant. Uh, I'm a little concerned about that myself to be real honest with you. So somebody want to make a motion one way or the other? I'll make a motion to approve. So I'm approving the resolution. Yeah, you can Is follow the motion on here. Can you read it? You want me to make move it? to approve the Is adoption the of the resolution, there? approving the variances from city ordinance section 52.56, subdivision 4A2, sections 5.2. Dot by six, subdivision four, A three, and sections fifty two point five six, subdivision four, A four as drafted within the following conditions and modifications. I would just include if you're Yeah, let's shorten it up. May I ask a question? The recommendations After from you the get planning get this discussion. John, were there recommendations included the from the planning commission? Was there conditions or yeah, the, the planning commission recommended approval of of the of the request um, per the updated revised sketch. That's a closer. Yeah, but there's nothing. There's nothing else. No, there was there was no there was no conditions. With no, that. I didn't no. think there would be on a variance. Right? Okay, I'll second that. Now, further discussion. Um, I've got a question for the person who wanted to prove this. Is there not a conflict here? I've asked that question over the years many times. And usually the people will refrain if there is a conflict. 
Is there? No. Okay. Not not Our unless there's isn't a. Our here to give any I, form of Not, opinion. but my understanding of a conflict of interest is if you have a. Now, could not there be a perception property. it's not his property and there's no financial gain? So a technical conflict of interest would not be apparent in this particular situation. All right, I have a motion. One could, if if he felt uncomfortable in the situation, oh, he would I have always that do, joke. but yeah. I always ask, and there isn't. I have a motion, I've asked. motion and a second to approve uh, the variances that so mentioned. <laughs> Further discussion. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Aye. Three to two. Now we can get into the comprehensive. Item C, approval of comprehensive plan and strategic plan. Bear with me as I run down here. Uh, Mr. Mayor, council members, uh, folks in the audience or at home, uh, <coughs> this request is being made by city staff for formal consideration and adoption of the, uh, the new Waite Park Comprehensive Land Use Plan and the Associated Land Use Plan map uh, and the City of Waite Park Strategic Plan. Uh, as you're well aware, the city is working on these two separate but related plans since early 22, uh, 2022. Comprehensive plan uh, dealing with the physical built environment of the city. Well, the strategic plan is intended as a guide for city staff to prioritize work and lay out concrete steps to achieve goals on a timeline basis. Um, typically, the, the comprehensive plan is going to be the kind of the backbone of long-term growth and planning efforts, uh, particularly for those areas that have yet to be developed or areas of uh, focal point for redevelopment. Um, it's reflective of the participation of citizens uh, of the broader community, both resident and business. Um, with guidance from city staff as well and elected ele elected and appointed officials. It's um, usually longer term in nature, typically updated every five five years or so and uh, fully updated or newly created every 10, 12, 15 years. Um, our consulting planners uh, with SEH Inc. Uh, attended and participated in the future search event that was held last spring, or spring of 2022, excuse me. Um, that was kind of concurrently with the strategic plan efforts that brought together uh, dozens of community representatives to consider the, the future path for the city of Waite Park. Uh, we um, recruited folks from um, the participation list of the future search. They became part of the, uh, the planning advisory committee or the PAC, uh, which also had representation from the planning commission, park board and city council. Um, we met monthly over the course of 2022 and early 2023 to go through the different components of the comprehensive plan, uh, kind of going um, topic by topic, such as transportation, housing, business, uh, growth corridors, those, sort of, those sorts of things. Uh, several pop-up events were also held at public areas of uh, local businesses. We worked with uh, uh, business owners to, to host um, our SDH folks there, uh, allowing uh, to get kind of on the spot comments and feedback from from a quite a few number of participants that were willing to give a few minutes of their time. Uh, lastly, we we held a public open house event uh, on October second. Um, we pushed that pretty hard on local media, and including our social media and um, newspaper. Uh, invited and posted it as a public meeting for, for all the city council, planning commission, and park board members. Um, we also went back and uh, followed up with everybody that participated in the 2022 future search. Um, all those 40, 50 people and, and the folks that had mentioned they were interested but weren't able to attend, um, inviting them to attend. And uh, we had a pretty good turnout at, at that meeting. Uh, feedback received from that meeting was reflected in the finalized uh, document that's before you tonight. The Planning Commission did review this at their, their November 14th meeting as well and recommended approval of the document. Um, I did in include the minutes. Um, as well for that, they it's basically the same minutes that were for a previous item, um, reflecting some of the discussion amongst the planning commission um, from that meeting. The strategic plan um, process large, ran concurrently with the comprehensive plan as there's some overlap and kind of general goals and intent, um, i.e. the large focus on physical development. Um, 
also started off with that future search event. Uh, as you may recall, over the course of the last uh, 18 months or so, we had several additional workshop events um, held with Permi Peterson, Peterson Permi, um, in which elected officials and city staff uh, continued to work through and, and drill down city priorities and um, plans for, for accomplishing those, uh, setting timelines to work toward and maintain accountability. Um, we, city staff has been looking toward ways to integrate the strategic plan goals with regular city aspects such as city council agenda items and uh, appointed board reports to ensure that the work is um, always in front of us and furthering strategic goals uh, whenever possible. We did um, present information with the um, strategic plan briefly at the um, open house with the comprehensive plan as well due to some of the overlap. Uh, but the planning commission at their previous meeting because the strategic plan is outside their purview, they did not need to comment or, or review that, that uh, component of the document. But they're familiar with it, but they don't have a need to vote on it or, or make a recommendation for that. Um, so you have, before you tonight, you have uh, two resolutions, one of which would be for the comprehensive plan and the um, associated land use plan map, and then the uh, City of Wade Park strategic plan. So I, my recommendation would be for adoption of uh, both resolutions uh, as written. Council? Comments, questions? Yeah, I think we spend entirely too much money on this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what did I tell you? I, and I still I, you think... Know, I could probably pass the strategic plan, but we're going to have to change the comprehensive plan. You've already used up the portion uh, that was scheduled for different types of development. Um, that's got to be updated already. Uh, I think if some of them. Keep doing this with all the variances you want to put in. Might as well throw the comprehensive plan out and just build the way you want to. <clears throat> the comprehensive plan is designed to be able to be uh, applied with uh, various applications and petitions. It's. Uh, it's a living, breathing, changing, amendable document. Uh, so it's 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 good as it sits. It includes these these opportunities to to make variations. It's just part of the design. And for what the um, comprehensive plan? Yeah. 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 It's always. And that's why variations. That's why people have to apply for a variation. Be a document that guides the growth of your city. Mm -hmm. And that's according to Minnesota statute. Yeah. Uh, it's not to make it and change it every other day. Or when anybody else wants to change whatever. Uh, that, that's not totally a correct statement you're making. Um, the comprehensive plan. That's debatable. Is. Because I wouldn't take your word as it being correct. What the state says about it and they say it's supposed to be a guideline for your growth of your city yes can does that mean that nobody can ever apply guideline. for a variation no uh, no variation applications are I'm just gonna I need a motion one way or the other and then we'll discuss it further okay I'll make a motion that um, we approve the attached resolution for the comprehensive and the strategic plan. Let's do them separate. separate. Let's okay. do them separately. You have to do them All right, separate. let's do the comprehensive plan. For second. I'll second for. Okay, further uh, discussion. Yeah. Um, I came prepared not to vote for the comprehensive plan because I think the dates are off, but giving um, Sean's words, the it's a guide because I don't agree with their timelines in some of them um, components, but. I, All right, further discussion. You want to add something? I, I'm just going to add the fact that the guide is really the, the key to what the comprehensive plan is. You go through a process and you look at 
what your development could potentially be and you get a lot of input from a lot of people of how you think that that's going to be guided and you utilize the consultants to be able to assist you with how that land use can apply. So I don't think in the strict interpretation of that that you cannot have variances, you can. Um, and I think from time frames, they can be varied as well. It's the general overall guiding. You gotta look at it as a bigger umbrella kind of a thing to be able to help provide some of that, that direction and the guidance. And so I think this document does that. This document has sought a lot of input from a lot of different players. There's been a lot of time invested in it, and I think that it's a really good guiding principle for the city to consider. Really just time, time invested in it doesn't make it right. And, and it bothered me right from the beginning when they first talked about doing it, is that first meeting. I wanted more citizens than staff or city employees, and it was over 50%. You had in the comprehensive plan over 200 participants oh. just in a survey, and majority of those were just survey. residents. You've had a lot of opportunities where, on the comprehensive plan side of this, there were a lot of opportunities where they actually reached out. There were events held at, um, I know there was one at Cashwise, they were held kind of all over the community getting different input and stuff. You had residents that were involved in, um, in coming to the meetings, the planning meetings, touring this city, and spend an, an a lot of invested time. So I would we all love to have more people involved? Absolutely. I wish we had more people that came to, to give us input on a lot of things that we don't get. But I do think that we really sought out what we could, and I think that we can't negate the fact that the people that did come forward and step forward brought a forth a lot of great insight. My only thing about the time is the fact that it was well thought out. I have a motion and a second to approve. Uh, the resolution for the Way Park Comprehensive Plan. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Four to one. Now I need a motion for the strategic plan. Okay, I'll make a motion <coughs> to approve the adoption of the resolution um, for the strategic plan. <coughs> I'll second that. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Four to one. All right, that's all we have. Approve bills. Move to pay the bills. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Seconded that. Um, I don't know. Mike. Oh, okay. I didn't hear that. I thought maybe Frank would go along. Okay, <laughs> thank you. All Adrian's favor? not here, so I got to make sure. Did we pass that? All in favor? Yes. Yep. Yes. We, All right. We think we Passed did. unanimously. I have a thank you from the Great Theater for the donation that we gave them last month, I guess. Uh, I don't have anything else. Shauna, you got anything? I do Next not. Meeting. Next meeting is December 18th. It'll be the final meeting, um, and then just just as a heads up. Um, we're not looking at doing the first meeting in January, um, which is actually the holiday. Um, and we would be actually both meetings in January follow on the holidays. So, so we would be looking at doing the second meeting, but we would do it on the Tuesday following <coughs> that in January. 18th or 16th? Is it the 16th? Thank you. <coughs> so January 16th after the meeting. So we're meeting on the 18th of December and then we would be looking at the 16th of January. Okay. Dave, you got anything? Bill? Nope. John? No, sir. Chief? No, sir. Chief? Carla? Anybody? All right, we are adjourned at 7.09. Because the APO was trying to plan that meeting. <laughs>